Congratulations on your purchase of the Hammer Slingshot from Simple Shot Shooting Sports. We're really excited to have this great new product in your hand, and this video is to supplement the owner's manual that came with your slingshot. This is a pretty complex and adaptable slingshot, and a video often works a little better than print. So we're going to go through all the different ways the slingshot works, how to put it together, how to take it apart, uh, best practices, and so on and so forth. So here we go. First off, safety. Never forget safety. Rule number one, always wear your safety glasses. And don't let that one slip. Wear your safety glasses anytime you shoot your hammer slingshot, or any slingshot for that matter. And remember that it's your responsibility to handle this slingshot safely. And if you put it in the hands of others, it's your responsibility to train them to shoot it safely as well. We wanna keep everyone safe and having fun out there. Slingshots and sling bows can and are dangerous weapons. Treat them with respect and you'll have lots of fun. When you receive your slingshot, it's going to come in this great box. In the box, you're going to have a full setup for the hammer sling bow. We've got the handle, two sets of ocularis plugs, and two heads. One head is just for shooting arrows, but can also shoot round ball projectile. Then we have another head that is purely for round ball projectile. And we're going to go into a little more detail on why we have two different heads. The package also contains two sets of bands, one set of bands for shooting arrows and one set of bands, flat bands, for shooting round ball projectiles. You also have a full owner's manual. So let's get into how to put your slingshot together. The first thing you'll need to do is to attach the wrist brace if you choose to shoot with a wrist brace. Underneath the package of your slingshot here, you've got your bands, your wrist brace, We'll go ahead and take it all out of here. Your extra heads and your ocularis plugs. You may want to keep this box for storing your slingshot. All right, for your initial assembly, you are going to need a screwdriver just one time to install the wrist brace. If you choose not to use the wrist brace, you can disregard this section. But to install the wrist brace, it's quite easy. Take your handle and your wrist brace. The orientation is as such. We insert the wrist brace here and then we have a locking plate that you have to install with the screw. That goes right here. So you have a bag here containing four ball bearings and your locking plate and screw. Put your ball bearings to the side and we'll get to those soon. The locking plate installs just like this. And then you'll put the screw in. And what this does is secures the wrist brace to the slingshot. These are thread forming screws, so the first time you install it, it will cut threads into the plastic for you. Once it's installed, it's on there well, and you can fold it up as such. Next, choose which head you want to put on there. We're going to start out with the slingshot head for shooting round ball projectiles. A couple of things to pay attention to when you're installing the head. We're going to be referring to the slingshot as having a shooter side of the slingshot and a target side of the slingshot. The shooter side is a side that faces you, the user, and the target side is the side of the slingshot that faces the target. On each head, the Simple Shot logo is located on the shooter side. To in install the head, you ins put the dovetail pieces together and begin the insertion. What's key here is to make sure you hear an audible click. When you hear that click, you know you've got it in place. You'll notice that there's a ramp here that the lo uh, locking mechanism rides upon. You want to make certain that the locking mechanism is sitting flush on top of that ramp. If it's pushed out or in, the, or in a position such as this, you are not locked in a position. Do not shoot it this way. Always make sure you hear the click and push all the way down. When you hear the click, you're good to go. Now the head is installed for shooting round ball projectiles. You do the same thing to install the sling bow head. To disassemble it, we've designed this for a very tight fit. So in, to take it apart, you want to use a certain hand position. So what you want to do is hold the handle in your right hand with the target side of the slingshot facing you. With your forefinger, reach across and push the liner, the locking mechanism to the side. Once the locking net mechanism is open, grab the head and pull it apart. It does take a little bit of force. We send all of these out pre-lubricated. 
we suggest using a silicone-based lubricant if you want to lubricate it later. We don't suggest using petroleum-based lubricants or waxes as they tend to pick up grit. You can use things such as camp dry or um, any other silicone-based lubricant. And that will keep things working smoothly. If it ever gets stuck or tight, you can tap it loose, apply the lubricant, and you'll be on your way again. Now we're going to go on and explain the features of the sling bow head. Now this is set up to shoot arrows. When it comes to you, it's already assembled with the circular a brush rest in place. If you'd like to take this circular brush rest off, simply use a Phillips screwdriver and remove the 1032 machine screws. If you need to adjust the circular brush rest side to side, you shouldn't need to adjust it much. You would simply loosen it and then rotate it. If you want to take it completely off, you can do that as well. And once it's taken completely off, you can shoot round ball projectiles from this unit. Now you might ask, why do we have two heads if they can both shoot round ball projectiles? Well, the answer is simple. The removable wrist brace gives you the option of shooting without a wrist brace. Now this is handy in certain jurisdictions where wrist braces are illegal. If you'd like to shoot your slingshot in say uh, New York State where uh, wrist braces are illegal, you wouldn't want to shoot with a head that's too tall. That's going to put undue stress on your uh, wrist. By taking the wrist brace off and continuing to use the sling bow head, these forks are a bit taller. Now, if you're shooting lightweight bands, it's not going to make a bit of difference. But if you want to shoot heavier bands, uh, more powerful bands, you want to reduce that wrist strain. So you'd want to use the dedicated slingshot forks. They're a bit lower, and it's going to reduce the strain on your wrist when shooting without the wrist brace. So both of these heads can be set up to shoot round ball projectiles in an through the forks configuration or an over the top. And I'm going to demonstrate that for you can also be set up to use looped tubular bands as well as single strand tubular bands. And you may want to refer to our Ocularis plug video manual and owner's manual that came with your slingshot for more details on this. We're going to show it all to you here in this video. All right, we're going to quickly show you how to install the bands for both round ball projectiles and the arrow bands using the Ocularis plugs. So you'll receive two sets of Ocularis plugs in your kit, one for each head. So if you wanted to take your slingshot or your sling bow out, say deer hunting, and you were on the stand uh, hunting in the sling bow mode, but uh, had an opportunity to take some small game with the round ball projectile, it's as simple as popping a new head on rather than changing the bands. Here's how we put the bands on. Your bands will come in the UV resistant pack. Leave your bands in this pack. It keeps them airtight and keeps the UV light out until you need to use them. For your sling bow bands, the installation is really simple. First off, you want to pay attention to the way the bands are put together. So we're going to call these ears. So this is where the, the band attaches to the, to the serving. You want to make sure the ears face towards the outside. This will make more sense as I install the bands onto the slingshot. So we're going to go ahead and install the bands onto the sling bow head. So we've got the sling bow head in place. And in this orientation here, I'm going to hold the bands and this is how they will seat. So we'll take the bands and find our orientation, bring them through, and this is a through the forks fitting for the sling bow. Bring it through and leave about a half inch on the target side of the slingshot. All right, so we've got the band coming through. We wanna make sure that it's square, meaning it's centered so that the middle of the bands line up with the aiming dimple on the outside of the fork. Fold it back over here on the target side and hold it in place like this. Next, you may want to lubricate the plug before you insert it. Now you can use rubbing alcohol or you can just use saliva. It's always quick and convenient. This will help with easier insertion. Making certain that you're using the flat part of the ocularis plug against the flat section of the band. Get the plug started. Push with your thumb from the shooter side of the slingshot while simultaneously pulling the bands from the target side of the slingshot until the plug is seated flush on the shooter side of the slingshot. Next, you'll take one of the supplied 7 16th ball bearings 
Again, you may wish to add some lubricant. Saliva works just fine, or rubbing alcohol, and insert that into the ocularis plug. What this does is provides an extra bit of security by adding pressure to the inside walls. At this point, one side is completely attached. We're gonna repeat the same thing on the opposite side. Again, making sure that the ears of the bands are on the outside. About a half inch through. Center it up, add a bit of lubricant. Push from the shooter side of the slingshot with your thumb while pulling the bands on the target side until the plug is seated, then add your ball bearing. Again, it may be easier for you the first time to remove the circular brush arrow rest prior to doing this, just to give your hands a little bit more room to work. One thing to pay attention to when you're using a lot of rubber in the system, like this, such as our aero bins, which are two layers of 40 thousandths thick rubber, there's really no need to use the ball bearing. The ball bearing is there for using much thinner latex, such as a single layer of 30 thousandths or a rubber that's even thinner. With this much rubber, the plugs hold tight without the ball bearings. So at this point, you've got your aero bins installed. And this is the orientation. So you simply knock your arrow between the two loops and then pinch, and this is set up for a, a pinch grip, and shoot. So this is the proper orientation for the flat bands for shooting arrows. Now we're gonna band up the slingshot fork with flat bands and looped tubular rubber. You can also um, band up the sling bow fork in the same way, you'll just simply need to remove the brush arrow rest and the holder. Do not attempt to shoot round ball projectiles with the arrow rest in place. Again, I repeat, do not attempt to shoot round ball projectiles with the arrow rest in place. Remove the two 1032 screws and you're good to go. So to set up the flat bands in a single layer or double layer, you install them the same way you would the arrow bands. This time I'm going to show you instead of a through the forks configuration where the bands are traveling on the outside of the prongs, we're going to set it up in an over the top configuration where the bands travel over the top of the prongs. One way is really no better than the other. It comes down to personal preference. One advantage of having the through the forks orientation is you can take advantage of the aiming dimple. It creates a light trough in the bands that you can use um, like a buckhorn sight on a rifle as an aiming reference. In order to get your pouch in the correct orientation, lie your bands on the table with the ammo side of the pouch facing up. At this point, we're simply going to place the band over the top of the fork and come back through. So now we have a tag end of about a half inch on the shooter side of the slingshot. Fold that back over. Insert your plug. And while pressing in, give it a bit of a tug from the back side. That will seat the plug. For a single layer band or th rubber thinner than say uh, 50 thousandths thick, you will want to use a ball bearing to make sure that it stays in there extra tight. Simply insert the ball bearing and press it in with your thumb until it's well seated. Now when we pull the bands over the top of the forks and the over the top configuration, we still see that the pouch is facing, the ammo side of the pouch is facing up. We're going to apply that same orientation to the other side, just like this. Again, leave about a half inch of tag end, insert your plug, making sure that the flat part of the plug is going against the uh, rubber. Don't insert it with the trough. The trough is for looped tubular bands. Seat it all the way, give it a tug, insert your ball bearing, and you're installed. You're good to go. For an over the top configuration, we are now ready to shoot. One of the reasons that we take the time to orient the pouch in an upward position is so that when the bands finish their cycle and deliver the projectile, they're in a straight orientation. Now this doesn't make a huge bit of difference, but the key with all slingshot shooting is consistency. Doing it the same way every time gives you similar results every time.
So take some time to make sure that your bands are installed correctly, that you haven't installed them with a twist, or installed one band in one direction and the other band in, in an opposite direction. What we're looking for is a trough created. Imagine, if you will, uh, you drop a ball bearing in here, it's going to roll down this trough. In the opposite orientation, there is no trough. It makes a mountain, a hill. One quick way to try to remember this. So here we are in the over-the-top configuration. To remove your bands, it's as simple as pressing the plug out from the target side of the slingshot, and they're out. Another great thing about the ocularis fork is a lot of folks grew up shooting natural fork slingshots where the bands were on the same plane of growth as the prong. You can set it up the same way. If you'd like to shoot somewhere in between over the top and through the forks, it works just fine. Next, we're going to show you how to put on the looped tubular bands. This is a great way to shoot looped tubular bands. These bands uh, deliver great power and they're generally a little more quiet than flat bands. So here's how you go. First, you're going to insert the tubes from the shooter side of the slingshot to where the loop is on the target side of the slingshot. At this point, you'll place the ocularis plug on the target side of the slingshot. Now this is quite unlike shooting flat bands where we were placing the plug on the shooter side of the slingshot. Here we're going to simply put the bands in here and make certain that they lie in the saddle. Then we'll bring it back into place and before we begin to seat this we want to make sure that we have an equal amount of tension on either side. If there's a big loop or a bow, make sure you pull it back out and get it straightened up again. Next, push the plug from the shooter side of the uh, target side of the slingshot and pull from the shooter side of the slingshot until the plug is flush you have one band installed. Take time to notice here that the ears, where the rubber is tied, faces to the outside of the slingshot. We're going to keep that same orientation on the opposite side. Run the loop through so that the loop is on the target side of the slingshot. Orient the bands so they ride in the trough of the ocularis plug. Bring it into position. Double check to make sure you have even tension, adjust if necessary, and then insert the plug as you pull on the tubes. Now you're installed to shoot looped tubular bands on the hammer slingshot. In this orientation, the projectile is traveling between the prongs of the slingshot. One caveat here, this is an, um, a shooting method that is uh, for more advanced shooters. If you're just starting out shooting and haven't learned a good release, we do not recommend that you begin shooting this way. Wait until you're uh, really dialed in with your release. What can happen in this particular orientation if you're not paying careful attention to your release or you're not comfortable with a slingshot, you can actually shoot the projectile into the fork of the slingshot. It's going to throw your shot. It's not going to be as much fun. But once you have your release dialed in, this is an extremely accurate way to shoot a slingshot. One thing that you can use with the aiming dimple here is when you draw back, you're drawing back the bands underneath your dominant eye. And this aiming dimple here becomes a, a buckhorn sight more or less. So you can position your target in the groove, line your bands up, and let it rip. This is going to get you really close. We'll go into more of this later in other videos when we also have some great videos on aiming. So here we have the hammer slingshot set up to shoot looped tubular bands. All right, you'll notice that the wrist brace on the hammer slingshot is adjustable. Now this is for a couple of reasons. One, if you're wearing heavy clothes, you want the slingshot to fit the same way it did as when you weren't wearing heavy clothes. Likewise, the wrist brace can help you get better alignment with your bands and arrow in relationship to the slingshot frame. It's a fine tuning mechanism. To adjust it, simply release the Velcro and attach it where it fits right. So what are we looking for for correct fit? Well, one thing we don't want is to have misalignment and I'm going to show gross misalignment here. So I've got the wrist brace in a um, orientation for someone with really large arms or wearing lots of clothes. And the key with the wrist brace is so that you can distribute the forces of these heavy bands into your wrist 
and not have to use your grip. In an ideal situation, you should be able to shoot with a very relaxed grip with the most heavy of bands. What we want to avoid is having the bands come up at an angle so the arrow is diving down through the circular brush rest. To fix this, I simply adjust the rest. Once the wrist brace is correctly adjusted, you should be able to have an open or relaxed grip. And as you draw back, the bands and the arrow be on the same plane, shooting straight through the circular brush rest. Now this is opposed to when the strap is in incorrect position, as I draw back, you can see that the arrow is diving downwards through the rest. Now that's gonna shoot both ways, but for top accuracy, you wanna keep everything in the same plane. So adjust your wrist brace to get that correct adjustment for your shooting style. This is not nearly as important when you're shooting round ball projectiles, but the same thing can be applied. So the adjustable wrist brace is another great feature of the hammer slingshot. One thing to pay attention to when you're loading your arrows, there's a couple of things you can do here to make it easier. One, rely on the wrist brace. Let it hang from your wrist. This gives you the opportunity to free your bands up and position your knock into the serving. Secondly, is use the gap here on the top to allow your arrow to drop in place. Do not attempt to push the arrow in from the front. Now this is most especially important if you're choosing to shoot broadheads. There's just no need to push it through that way. Drop it in place. That's the way you want to shoot it. Secondly, if you're shooting fishing arrows, you may need to remove your knock from the way it was sent to you um, to get proper alignment. And what we're looking for here is the slide stop that's at the back of the arrow. We want to make sure that the knock is oriented in a position that keeps the slide stop moving through and between the top slot. You don't want to move your slide stop to the side or down. Of course, it's still going to shoot, but it's going to cause a little bit more uh, friction and may throw your shot. So when shooting a fishing arrow, make sure that you adjust your knock to have the slide stop in the 12 o'clock position. So some jurisdictions don't allow the use of wrist brace. Well, that's easy enough to solve by simply taking the wrist brace off and ditching it. However, other countries, such as Germany, have very, very strict regulations as it regards a wrist brace on a slingshot. So these laws read, if the slingshot can be fitted with a wrist brace, then the whole slingshot is against the law. Well, we have solved this problem. What we can do is offer a service to simply chop off the whole rail system and wrist brace mount. Now, it's a shame that you lose the rail system, but you still have the opportunity to have a lanyard hole for safety and no opportunity to install a wrist brace. Again, very adaptable slingshot. So if you're choosing to shoot the slingshot without the wrist brace, we strongly recommend that you use the supplied paracord lanyard through this hole and utilize the lanyard while you're shooting. The last thing you want to do is accidentally let go of the slingshot when you're at full draw. Due to Newtonian physics, there's an, every action has an equal and opposite reaction, and you don't want this chunk of plastic coming back towards your face. Please pay attention to safety. Use a, a lanyard or make your own lanyard if you choose to shoot without the wrist brace. One of the coolest things about this slingshot is the rail system for adding on accessories such as a flashlight or fishing reel. Now this is a weaver rail, so it has weaver spacing. This will accept most Picatinny uh, accessories as well as all weaver accessories. So if you have accessories from your uh, own firearms, it's gonna fit right on there. Great thing about it is it, uh, one inch scope rings fit most flashlights. So your standard mag light and most of your standard tactical flashlights are one inch in diameter. So if you have a set of one inch scope rings that fit a weaver rail, you can put a flashlight right onto your slingshot. We've got a uh, light here that integrates nicely. And a cool thing about this particular uh, rail system is that we took the time to orient the, the rail, we tilted it so that when you draw out and you're at, uh, say, an average shooting distance for slingshots of 10 to 15 meters, the light is going to be spot on. So if you've ever struggled with trying to hold a flashlight while shooting at night and have or use a headlamp while shooting at night and notice that your beam is nowhere near your intended target, problem solved. So if you have a spare scope ring that fits a weaver rail that's one inch in diameter, you can put just about any tactical flashlight or mag light into the system. So if you want to bow fish with this rig, same thing. One inch ring, we've got an adapter that fits the threading for your standard um, archery accessories. With this particular slingshot, this is the style of 
bow fishing rig that um, well, is only one that'll fit. You can't use an AMS type rig. But with this rig right here, you simply slide it in place, lock it on, and shoot. So it's a great bow fishing rig as well. So when you're choosing arrows for your sling bow, always shoot your arrows full length. The industry standard on a full length arrow is generally 31 to 32 inches. Spine has very little effect in shooting uh, arrows out of a sling bow because we do have a true center shot here. So leave them full length, and this is for a couple of good reasons. One, it's going to give you more mass. You're looking for downrange kinetic energy, more mass is always a good thing. But most importantly is you would never ever want to draw the arrow out past the brush rest. In doing so, you're holding 30 to 50 pounds of rubber with an arrow flopping around in your hand close by. I don't need to spell out what kind of disaster that could be. So take special care to never, ever overdraw the arrows. Draw back and it leaves at least two inches of arrow hanging out in front of the arrow rest. Now a lot of people would ask, can I shoot stones out of the slingshot? Sure, you can shoot stones, but you're going to want to use a band set that's specially set up for shooting stones. Shooting stones in the supplied band sets or any of the band sets that we sell here at Simple Shot that are used for round ball projectiles is a recipe for trouble. The reason being is that stones being of an irregular shape don't fit well into the pouch. You want to make sure you use a band set that has a pouch large enough to fully encompass the stone. Secondly, don't shoot jagged stones. You're wanting to look for something as spherical as possible. So if you do choose to shoot stones, be very discerning in your stone selection. We also suggest that you only shoot stones in the over-the-top configuration. Do not attempt to shoot stones in the through-the-forks configuration, and do not attempt to shoot stones using looped tubular bands. All right, so this slingshot here is a great system to put into your bug out bag or your go bag. It weighs about 13 ounces. It's made from glass-filled nylon of a very similar nature as the Glock firearm. Extremely tough stuff. You're not going to break this slingshot without a lot of effort. The slingshot is very compact. You can disassemble it into its component parts and put it all in your bag. If you choose to fold it up, you can simply fold it up and it's relatively flat. It fits in lots of small spaces but delivers a huge amount of power. This combined with a couple of band sets and you're set for any survival or bug out situation. A lot of folks will ask, what kind of energy can this sling bow develop? To put it in simple terms, these sling bows will shoot as hard as an equivalent recurve or longbow. One caveat, rubber is very much affected by temperature. If it's very cold outside, you want to make sure your shots are fast. If the rubber has a chance to cool off at full draw, it is not going to retract at the same rate. So if you're shooting or hunting in colder weather, do expect some loss in performance. Anything above 60 degrees Fahrenheit you can expect to achieve similar velocities with similar weight arrows from a bow of a similar draw weight utilizing latex rubber. Sling bows are profoundly powerful and can be very, very accurate. Just like any other marksmanship discipline, practice is the key. The accuracy comes from the Indian, not the arrow. So take your time to get very comfortable with your slingshot or your sling bow. If you choose to hunt with it, please hunt within ranges that you feel comfortable making a killing shot. All right, safety first. Always wear your safety glasses. Another thing to remember that slingshots and sling bows can cause severe personal injury or death. Treat them accordingly. Treat each slingshot or sling bow as though it were loaded firearm. Never shoot at anything that you don't intend to destroy. And while sling bows can be used recreationally, they are not toys. If you're under the age of 18, we recommend that you use it with the supervision of a parent. If you're over the age of 18 but act as though you're not, don't use a sling bow and don't be stupid. Don't consume alcoholic beverages while you're shooting. Know your target and what's behind it. Make sure you have an adequate backstop for your target. Remember these arrows are flying fast and arrows can penetrate quite deeply. The projectiles that you're shooting, the round ball projectiles, can cause quite a bit of damage. Know your backstop. Know what you're shooting at and have an adequate backstop. Bands. Bands do wear out. Always inspect your bands before each shot. If you notice nicks or tears, retire those bands. Replace damaged or worn bands immediately. Don't shoot at hard surfaces. Don't shoot at the surface of water. You want to avoid ricochets at all costs. 
bands are made from latex. If you have latex allergies or sensitivities, keep this in mind. Always store your bands in a cool, dark place. Keep them in a place that you yourself would be comfortable. Keep them out of the light and keep them away from ozone. So that means don't leave them next to your electronics. Ozone and UV destroy bands. The bands are going to go bad at some point, whether you use them or not. So store them appropriately and replace them when needed. When it comes to arrows, never fire a damaged arrow. Inspect each arrow prior to each shot. You can do this by flexing the arrow, visually inspecting it. If you see anything out of the ordinary with this arrow, discard it and destroy it. It is not worth the trouble that could come from shooting a damaged arrow. And never draw the arrow beyond the brush arrow rest. Doing so may result in serious physical injury. Remember, safety first. One thing we'd love to do at Simple Shot is teach folks how to have more fun with their slingshots. So be sure to visit our website, check out our YouTube page. We're constantly putting up new content and we love hearing from you. If you've got a question or a video you'd like us to shoot, let us know. We'd be glad to do it for you. There's also lots of ways to modify your slingshot and we supply pretty much all the material. So if you've got a question on how to modify your slingshot, build a certain band set, or just wondering what ammo goes best with which bands, don't hesitate to give us a call or send us an email. We'll be glad to help you. Thanks for taking a look. Shoot straight and have fun.